tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away Introducing Sky Cruise, a nuclear-powered hotel suspended above the clouds. This futuristic Sky Hotel gives you the ultimate travel experience. It's big enough to accommodate over 5,000 guests. Its sleek design combines the features of a commercial plane while offering the epitome of luxury. Sky Cruise features a big hall that offers a 360-degree view of your surroundings. Here, you get to enjoy the most breathtaking views of nature from above. An elevator connects the panoramic hall to the main entertainment deck. It allows you to easily shuttle between the two locations. The main entertainment deck is perfect for recreational activities. It features shopping malls, sports centers, swimming pools, restaurants, bars, playgrounds for children, theaters, and cinemas. There's also a separate section for organizing events and business meetings. And if you want to declare your love above the clouds, Sky Cruise's wedding halls give you and your partner, along with your guests, a unique memorable experience. The floors of the main entertainment deck are connected via two external elevators that come with a great view. Each side of the Sky Cruise features three balconies or viewing domes that are perfect for a relaxing time. Here guests can enjoy a wide range of activities including stargazing and watching Aurora Borealis up close. You don't have to worry about Sky Cruise's carbon footprint. Its 20 electric engines are powered solely by clean nuclear energy. A small nuclear reactor uses highly controlled fusion reaction to provide the Sky Hotel with unlimited energy. Thanks to nuclear energy, the hotel never runs out of fuel and can remain suspended in the air for several years without ever touching the ground. With Sky Cruise, you do not need to worry about air turbulence. Its navigation systems feature a state-of-the-art command deck that uses artificial intelligence to predict air turbulence minutes before they happen. If any potential air turbulence is detected, the system automatically prevents any vibrations from happening. It creates anti-vibrations that work like noise-canceling technology allowing the Sky Cruise to glide over the vibrations with ease. Everything is engineered to perfection for your own comfort and safety. Say goodbye to jet lags, motion sickness, or the fear of flying. Sky Cruise has got you covered in case of any medical emergencies. The hotel features a facility equipped with the latest medical technology aimed to keep you safe, healthy, and fit so you can enjoy your journey without any disruptions. Despite having several large landing wheels, Sky Cruise rarely lands on the surface. 
supplies and guests are delivered to the hotel using electric commercial airliners and private jets, which take off from different airports around the world. All maintenance and repairs are also done above the clouds. The concept was originally designed by Tony Holmston and reimagined and animated by Hashim Al Ghaili. How can I keep my daughter, nine years old, away from these dangers from the internet? Only two things. One, you actually don't let her spend time on it. Which as you know is very hard, because everybody in her world will be on it. Two, and this is the most important, the only way, I have a 13 year old daughter, and I think about this a lot. This is my number one thing that I'm most passionate about, period, in the end of the world. Number one way to protect the child is to build their self-esteem. When a child is not insecure, they don't succumb to danger. Make sure she's confident about who she is, her brains, isn't overly reliant on how she looks. Build her actual self-esteem, because you're not gonna be able to watch her every minute. No, I can't. But, but if you I make, I, I know you do, which is why I'm telling you this, I can sense that you realize it. If you make her confident in who she is, that she's amazing the way she is, she will not succumb to other people, and that is how she will navigate. It's the best answer I, I received, thank you very much. Watch the straw. Three, two, one. Whoa! Gone. Whoa. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? All the way. Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 no.
और तेरे को पता है क्या रोहित को है ना प्रमोशन मिलने वाला है ये टाइम देख ले गारंटी तेरे को कैसे पता पता है रे मेरे को सब कुछ तो सब पता है इनका कैसा चलता है ये सब तेरे को क्या लगता है वो लास्ट ईयर मार्केटिंग का प्रोजेक्ट क्यों दिया रोहित को क्योंकि वो मार्केटिंग में है अरे वो सब वो सब बहाना है रे वो थोड़ी है सच में क्यों दिया पता है तेरे को क्योंकि है ना है रे रीजन दे रहे मतलब बता दूँ आराम से सब पॉलिटिक्स है पॉलिटिक्स इनको लगता है अपने को समझ में नहीं आता कुछ लेकिन अपन स्मार्ट है <laughs> ऐसे थोड़ी डी डी एस से बचते हैं इश्क सच्चा वही जिसको मिलती नहीं मंजिले मंजिले रंग थे नूर था जब करीब तू था एक जन्नत सा था ये जहां मेरे नाम सा लिख के छोड़ गया तू कहा
मैं तुझको थाम लू उठ के रब से पहले मैं तेरा नाम रखू तुझे पल को तले पूजा करू तेरी तेरे सिवा तू ही बता क्या जिंदगी मेरी मैं तो तेरे सपनों के रंग में ढला तेरी उंगली पकड़ के चला ममता के आंचल में पला तेरी उंगली पकड़ के चला ममता के आंचल में पला Avec la faute en vie, avec sa croix, puisque mon autre vie. Ani na na ni ni na o, ani na ni na ni na o, ani na na ni ni na o, ani na ni na ni na o.
Ready? Who's in?
What is the most innate in all of us is that ability to be able to put ourselves in other people's shoes and see the world the way they see it. That's empathy. That's at the heart of design thinking. When we say innovation is all about meeting unmet, unarticulated needs of the marketplace, it's ultimately the unmet and articulated needs of people and organizations that make are made up of people and you need to have deep empathy. So I would say the source of all innovation is what is the most humane quality that we all have, which is empathy. Dreams without goals Come on. are just dreams. Come on. And ultimately they fuel disappointment. Exactly. On the road to achieving your dreams, you must apply a discipline, discipline. Come but on. more importantly, consistency, consistency. Because without commitment, you'll never start. But without consistency, you never finish.
This is instant deployable solar power anywhere. A rapid roll solar field deploys from a small trailer in two minutes. It can provide enough power for commercial applications, such as disaster relief, military, mining, events and festivals, agriculture, construction, and electric vehicle charging. The Rapid Roll T system takes portable solar power to the next level of capability and mobility by unrolling a solar field up to 16 kilowatts power from a small trailer. A commercial scale off grid solar power system can be deployed faster than ever before, enabling self sufficient power to be deployed easily in remote locations. The system was developed by Renova Gen, a UK technology business. They mentioned that the key innovation here is the creation of a flexible, rollable solar PV array as a single piece mat, with built in structural support and power transmission cabling embedded throughout. The mat can therefore be permanently wired into their innovative spooling mechanism, which means that all you have to do is unroll and switch on. No cable connections or system commissioning is required on site as it is all permanently built into the system. The key benefits the rapid roll system provide over typical rigid panel systems are speed of deployment, high power capacity from a small box, and ease of use. Renova Gen is now developing the rapid roll I. It is the integration of the rapid roll technology into a site opening ISO shipping container, combined with inverters and a larger battery bank. It creates an easily transportable, self-sufficient solar power system, capable of generating 10 times more power, deploying a huge solar array measuring 5 meters or 10 meters in width and up to 200 meters in length. Renova Gen says that it represents by far the largest containerized deployable solar array yet conceived. At this scale, a multi-megawatt solar power plant could be deployed in a matter of hours, city-scale power sufficient for a large mining site or military main operating base. Is this the future of solar power?
Oh shoot. Tori is where gonna go. Okay. You got him? I got him now. Alright. Toe, come up why, here and hold that's these. Why, that's why we have a happy and joyful wedding. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's classic. <laughs> Justine grabbed the ring before we die. <laughs> That's all right, Edward. Edward. Take this ring. Take this ring. That's a sign of my love and fidelity. It's a sign of my. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on. Come on. Okay. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. And great. on you. Thank <laughs> you. 
हम मत बोलिए अपने साथ मत जोड़िए हमको अलग है हमको आता है नमक अदा करना आपकी तरह नहीं है हम अरे See yourself in your mind making it. Say the following words. I'm powerful. Powerful. 
I'm fearless. fearless. I'm unstoppable. unstoppable. I'm incredible. incredible. I'm fast. fast. I'm strong. I'm strong. I can do it. I can do it. See yourself getting all the way up right now. Visualize it, and as soon as you're ready, you go and you give it 100%. As soon as you're ready, you go. Come on, get it. There you freaking go. Yes. <laughs> All of America, when they were watching, they all thought, how's this girl going to cook blind? Oh. I didn't know what to expect from Gordon Ramsay. That is disgusting. Visually, it looks like vomit. Congratulations. Thank you. The worst dish in this competition so far. All this hard work leading up to this moment, and it could be ruined in just a second. Welcome. Thank you. Um, first name is? My name is Christine. Christine, you've got five minutes to complete that dish. Thank you. I don't know how I'm gonna get the food on the plate. I can't see anything. I don't even know where the sink is. Just in front. Just in no, front? No, you, you were there. Just a little bit higher, darling. Okay, thank you. Are. I hear the judges talking to me. I have no idea what their facial expressions are. Christine? Yes, chef? Were you born blind? No, no, chef. Um, when I was uh, maybe about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with a I'm sorry, can you tell me where I had put the green onion? The green onion? Still in the bowl? Definitely nervous then. Uh, uh, it should be right in front of you. It's right in front of me? Right in front yeah. of your hand. Okay. The food that I grew up with was, in my childhood, sort of a source of embarrassment, and I think it made me feel different at school. People said, oh, something smells, or that looks weird. My mom and I would argue a lot. I think we would just verbally fight me, wanting to be with my friends all the time. She was very protective of me. She actually never let me in the kitchen to cook with her. I did feel like I reflected a lot of my anger on her. I was about 12 or 13 years old when she was diagnosed with cancer. It didn't really register with me when I was told that. I thought surely my mom would beat the cancer and survive it and be fine moving forward. I remember I was taken out of school. My uncle had come to pick me up from school. He said, you need to go see your mom now. She was lying in the bed. She was hooked up to a lot of machines so she couldn't talk. And I remember uh, holding her hand and just telling her that it's okay to let go. I didn't think that a parent could die so soon. The pain was indescribable in my gut. You know, as much as I probably denied it then, 
She was the most important person in my life. After she had passed away, I realized my mom didn't write down any recipes, so I didn't have any of her recipes. To this day, I regret never having learned to cook from her. I just bought cookbooks, some pots and pans and knives, and read recipes word for word. Cooking, it's a way for me to connect to her and to honor her, her memory as well. Ever since, I've been trying to recreate her recipes. I love the fact you're tasting everything. I have to, I can't see. <laughs> so I was about 19 or 20 years old, starting to really excel at cooking. That's when I started losing vision in both of my eyes. Each time I would experience more vision loss, I would have to relearn how to do everything from the start, like how to use a knife again or use the stove or fry an egg. The year after that, I lost even more vision and I had to feel my way around the kitchen. I thought I wouldn't be able to cook again. I decided to try to make myself a sandwich and I thought, what simpler sandwich could I make than a peanut butter jelly sandwich? I remember getting the peanut butter and jelly all over the counter and not being able to align the two slices of bread together neatly. I remember throwing that sandwich away in the trash because I was so upset with myself, wondering would I ever be able to cook a meal again like I did before. And that's when I realized I had no other choice. I had to get back up and try again. I just started small, figured out how to cut fruit, then figured out how to scramble an egg again, doing it over and over again. Um, the dish does need the sort of stability. It's a staple done beautifully, but missing the rice. Yes, Jeff, I understand. I'm sorry. <sighs> you know, you're going to be judged like everybody else in this competition. Yes, Jeff. Your personal challenge is size. For me, that's one of the most delicious dishes I've tasted in this competition so far. Do you know what I'm going to give you? A white apron. A white apron. Congratulations. Thank you. I made a lot of mistakes. I would burn things. I would miss the pan, lose food on my cutting board when I was chopping it. It's delicious. Oh, thank you, Chef. It's fresh. It's fragrant. You cook every freaking time like an angel. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Seriously. Chef. Cooking, it's a way for me to connect to her, to remember my mom. You should be incredibly proud. In the finale, I cooked dishes that reminded me of her. As you know, there can only be one winner. To have her strength with me. And that winner. Christine. When I cook, I feel like my mom's spirit is somewhere nearby. If my mom were still here today, I would ask her to teach me how to make her Vietnamese beef noodle soup. Although each time I cook it, it gets better and better, it still has yet to capture the memory of my mom. To me, it's kind of my white whale that I've been chasing and probably will chase for the rest of my life. Whether it's trying to get through challenges to win a cooking competition, to just trying to replicate my mom's beef noodle soup, you just have to try over and over until you succeed.
No!
I got my peaches out in Georgia. Oh yeah, shit. I get my weed from California. That's that shit. I took my chick up to the north, yeah. Better. Hey, Optimus Prime. Greetings. Transform. <laughs> Oh man. Optimus Prime. Fight. Greetings. Fight Autobots. Fight Autobots. <laughs> Optimus Prime. Greetings. Attack. Prepare for battle. <laughs> oh my god, the smile on your face. <laughs> That's so cute. How long have you been wanting this? Oh, since they announced it. <laughs> oh, all right. And how do you get it to go back? Hey, Optimus Prime. Greetings. Transform. There you go. Ego. Oh, they got some drums came in, you ain't see that coming. Hands on my head, can't tell me nothing. Got a taste of the fame and a pull my stomach. Throw it back up like I don't. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. I'm in the
Бог тебя обязательно, ты не моя Тогда дайте пацаны по моей симпатии Сумма на либо и без нас We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. So let's get clear about that. Okay, and this means all the economic structures, all the global institutions, and the economics we teach everyone is all designed to keep Africa exactly where it is. And whether it is Europe or US or now China, it's always the same. We need Africa to be impoverished because we need those raw materials and we need them dirt cheap. Okay, so that's the message. It doesn't mean to say that there's nothing Africans can do. Of course there is. Okay, but this is the opposition that they're fighting. This is what it's about. Because if Africa does do something different, I assure you living standards of all those in Europe and North America and Asia is going to fall. Okay? And that is a big price to pay. I assure you that the West is not going to allow that without a big fight. Okay? So this is what it's fundamentally about. Uh, what I want to show you is how these structures are operating. It's just 20 minutes, so we can't do very much, but just to give you a little bit of an idea. And why I keep the ideology part there is because we are part of the producers of ideology. At universities and academic institutions, we are complicit in this whole enterprise. Okay, so the job of many Western academics is to convince Africans they have to keep doing what they're doing. Okay? And to show them, it's your fault that you're poor. It's not our fault. It's your fault that you're poor. You know? So, this is what we do in academic institutions. And I, I want to show that as well. We just start. This is what it's basically about, so you, you know what it's about. But I want to just show you the extent to which Africa is specializing in the production of raw materials and basic agricultural goods. 
Um, we know the basic forces that have caused this underdevelopment. We know it's colonization. I will not discuss that very much because my colleague speaker is going to go into some aspects of this. But I do want to discuss the global economic structures, the global financial institutions, and economic ideology, briefly, to give you a flavor of those. Let me start with this. You can't really see it so easily, but if those of you who are interested, you want the PowerPoint, I'm sure we can make it available to you. Uh, but the thing that you really need to see is the top line. Okay. And the extent of dependency is captured by this statistic at the top. Okay. And you compare it with all other income groups, and what you see is essentially in that one statistic how dependent sub-Saharan Africa is on raw material production. Okay? This is the very heart of what makes sub-Saharan Africa beat. Okay? Here, just to have a look at one very important additional statistic with all this export coming from sub-Saharan Africa, how much does sub-Saharan Africa account for in terms of global trade value? value. We know there are vast resources coming from there, but look at the bottom line in terms of global trade value. Look at that. 0.5% 1975, 0.95% going down to 0.1. 2.1. Meaning that with all these vast resources being produced, how much are they getting for it? Nothing. Nothing. This is a very significant piece of data. Then I just want to show you what has happened to sub-Saharan Africa, because what we know, what we know and from all studies, no country ever develops without manufacturing. Okay, producing raw materials will not take you anywhere. Producing basic agricultural goods will not take you anywhere. And let's have a look at how much manufacturing activity takes place in sub-Saharan Africa. We can look over the last 15 odd years, 15, 20 years. And we see manufacturing has actually declined as a percentage of the total. This is percentages of total production in sub-Saharan Africa, how much of it is accounted for by manufacturing. So this figure here is 17% of the total. Most of the rest, when we talk of industry, it includes manufacturing, but the bulk of it is mining. Okay? Raw material extraction. This is the bulk of it. And here we, we see actually raw material extraction has stayed the same. What has caused industry to fall is the fall in manufacturing production. This is deliberate because we will never, as Western economists, as Western policymakers, we cannot afford to allow Africa to industrialize and start producing manufacturers. Okay, so we will do everything to stop that. And I'm going to show you how we actually block that.
ya. Sami. Ya. Sami. Burdi çalınca. Ya. 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 We normally think of robots as tough as nails and made of metal, but that's not always the best design. This is a knitted, wearable, soft robot. It can sense and react to touch and uses compressed air to open and close. The glove was created with an autonomous machine knitting system. First, the stitch and sensor design patterns are specified in software. The designs are simulated before the printing process. Next, the textile piece is fabricated by the machine, which can then be fixed to a rubber silicon tube to complete the actuator. It allows the actuators to feel and respond to what they touch. The glove can adapt to the shapes of different objects. Several prototypes exist, including a soft hand 
an interactive robot and a pneumatic walking quadruped. The assistive glove could help finger muscle movement to complete tasks and motions. The assistive sleeve can help bend elbow or knee joints without exerting any force. The wearable soft robotics could be used to assist with moving other body parts, such as a wearable robotic exoskeleton. Then <laughs> PWT Mantri came to me and gave me a lot of money. Where is it? I gave it to him in 3-4 days. I gave it to him at home. I gave it to him at home. I said, you are a man. You are not a man. You are a man. Yes, he will tell you about your face. Do you want to do it? No, no, no. मैं फेंक रहा हूँ अरे नहीं 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 मैं फेंक रहा हूँ अरे बिल्कुल ऐसा नहीं नहीं फेंक रहा हूँ फेंक रहा हूँ नहीं 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 विठला चनानी रंगुनिया गाऊ विठला चनानी रंगुनिया गाऊ विठू माउली 